the entire gas station is removed yep there is no gas or diesel pumps here anymore and we now have chargers everywhere instead Looking for your chance to drive off in a brand new electric vehicle and support a nonprofit? Well, one of the best nonprofits fighting for clean energy is running their seventh annual EV raffle for the planet, and it's their biggest yet. Here are three reasons why you should buy a ticket today to support our friends at the CCAN Action Fund. Number one, amazing odds. For the first time, each ticket gives you three chances to win an electric car. Even better, only 10,000 tickets will be sold. Those are great odds. Reason number two, the prizes are stunning. The grand prize winner gets to pick from six luxury EVs. The rugged R1S, the powerful R1, Tea, the brand new Lucid Gravity, the sleek Lucid Air, the bold Porsche Macan EV, or the iconic Porsche Taycan. Yeah, and those are all great cars, and again, you get to pick which one. The second place winner gets to choose from a Volkswagen ID Buzz or a Hyundai Ioniq 5. And there's a third place winner, a Chevy Equinox EV. Even better, the group will cover state and federal taxes. Oh, but what about tariffs? Well, no problem, they cover those too. Reason number three, the CCAN Action Fund supports clean energy nationwide. Why? So you could win a great EV and support a greener world. It really is kind of a win-win. To enter, check out www.evraffle.org. That's evraffle.org. Or simply click the link in the description below. Tickets are only $200. Enter to win today. Around 10 years ago, we got DC fast chargers at our gas station. So that you could go to your gas station with a Nissan Leaf or whatever. Uh, was available at the time and charge up your EV and you could get the same amenities as we do uh, with gas cars and diesel cars because you could go in and buy some buns or a hot dog or something to drink and you can charge up your EV which was amazing they then took it a step further they replaced gas pumps with chargers so they took out a few gas pumps and installed chargers so that you often had a, like a 50 50 split of gas pumps and chargers at gas stations so that you could charge under a canopy so you got one more amenity you got the canopy we also at the same time installed a ton of charging parks around uh, norway so that would be the tesla supercharger network or ionity or other providers large charging parks uh, that are just so close to the highway absolutely amazing so then you have awesome locations for DC fast charging. Then we took it a step further because this is an old gas station. But now the entire gas station is removed. Yep, there is no gas or diesel pumps here anymore. And there was. And we now have chargers everywhere instead. So this is the newest addition to the Oslo charging network, I would say. You have this st1 which is the gas station that was here earlier also uh, called shell in other countries and i think uh, they were called shell in norway earlier as well but basically they are a gas station and a convenience store operator that now have replaced all the gas pumps they had no gas pumps remaining so people coming here with a gas or diesel car will not be able to fill up so this is one of the first times uh, this has happened. As I mentioned earlier, we have, of course, uh, done um, the replacement of gas pumps many times, but not entire stations. So this is a charging only station and you have the same kind of convenience store that you would expect at uh, a gas station. So everything is just <laughs> a gas station without gas pumps. So what should we call them? Energy stations? Giant charging stations with convenience store? I don't know. But uh, let's take a look at this station and see what it has to offer. Here we have 12 Kempower satellites connected to the power stacks that uh, Kempower has. So this is a system that's very similar to Tesla, where they have the chargers separated from the dispensers. So the dispenser here is capable of doing 400 kilowatt or 200 kilowatts if you have a 400 volt car so it's based on voltage uh, that's of course because of the current limitations of both uh, the satellite and the cable itself 
there seems to be two chargers here or two power stacks or whatever it's called uh, of 600 kilowatts so we have 1.2 megawatts of power that means that if, we, if everyone draws the maximum from the dispensers they should be able to deliver 100 kilowatts uh, to each so this is a great solution for actually getting people charging uh, as soon as possible uh, and it might compromise on the charging speed but at least people are connected and charging this place is not full at all right now but I can imagine that uh, during the rush hour or when people are traveling uh, or in winter where when people need to charge more often this place is probably more full card payment and everything here so great uh, great to be able to use uh, just use your uh, credit card the good thing about the uh, camp power here and the solution that they have chosen is that the, it's less likely to be a charging queue because people can most likely connect because there are 12 connectors here Many places in Norway you have these Alpitronic units which are amazing great hardware will give you the best charging speed at all times The problem is that you often have six ports and when you have six ports there will be a charging queue and When there is a charging queue it kind of sucks for me as a user because I need to wait and not uh, be able to charge and I need to stay with the car I can't leave the car and everything so I personally much prefer the ability to at least plug in and get the charge going I can go to the bathroom I can buy some snacks at the gas gas station uh, so that's the nice thing about a system uh, like the camp power system here over for example choosing uh, Alpitronics or other types of chargers of course uh, if you have a ton of Alpitronics, the problem is definitely solved and you get the nice awesome charging speed every time Regardless the ability to uh, Distribute power uh, with the camp power units to those that need it around the charging site is amazing I think they have 25 kilowatt uh, granularity, which means that if you charge at 125 kilowatts you are using five of the power modules uh, or at least you are not using anymore. You're not reserving any more power than you actually need So that's uh, great about this system The site itself uh, has a canopy, but the canopy is not over the entire car It's just over the area where you go out of the car to pay for charging and plug in the car I think that's uh, plenty. It's pretty good right now. It's uh, raining in Norway. We are getting a little bit of showers and it seems like uh, people can just stand under a canopy and it's completely fine and they can stay inside the car But the convenience store also have places inside where you can sit like a lounge which uh, is great because when you're charging you kind of You sometimes don't want to stay in the car, but you don't want to stay outside in the rain Then you have the option to sit inside the gas station maybe having some food some drinks uh, etc inside the gas station so that's a Fantastic solution. I think it's great that they implemented that here. Uh, I'm not sure if that was here when the, this was a normal gas station. My guess is not. So that's awesome. They also have a vacuum here and tire pressure thing so you can fill up your tire pressure. They also have a car wash, which is great. Um, so this is very, very similar to a normal gas station, just no gas pumps, which I think is probably the way you want it gas stations have been improved throughout the years and they have come to a point where they have the amenities that people want because uh, what else would draw customers right so uh, so this seems like a very normal gas station just that you have charging stations everywhere it is also important to note the location of this uh, charging station we are in the middle of oslo and in the middle of oslo people are able to home charge but not everyone Apartments are difficult. It's one of the most difficult tasks we ha have in electrification of our transportation because Maybe you have a variable charge uh, parking place. You're uh, doing curbside parking. Where are the chargers? Are they occupied? Oh, I need the chargers. It's a difficult thing uh, to actually solve. It's the most difficult thing to so uh, solve. I would say it's more difficult to solve than DC fast charging everywhere. So this is a great solution for those that need it once in a blue moon to actually DC fast charge uh, their car on the daily. Of course, I recommend having home chargers, but that's easier said than done. So uh, the placement of this, uh, this uh, station is in the middle of Oslo and 
that means also the taxis will charge there. So five of the six, uh, six, um, sorry, five of the twelve dispensers are reserved for uh, charging uh, taxis. So that's great to see that the taxis get their own kind of space uh, here for charging, because that's also a problem in Oslo. The EC fast chargers are used by taxis all the time, so they take up all the stalls. Now they have a reserved space, so they will most likely keep to that, I think. Uh, I'm not sure if they will... Um, it's mostly so that the taxis have charging available, as, and us normal deadly people will have to... Um, will have to give our place to the taxis uh, to get throughput on the taxis. I think it's a good solution to have reserved uh, for rideshare and taxis. I think that's uh, great. A good solution that Oslo really needed, DC fast charging, is important to have in cities as well. Not everyone can home charge. Sometimes people with home charging need DC fast charging. Sometimes taxis need DC fast charging or they will need it during their workday. So I think it's a good solution in that sense. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, gas and diesel car owners that might be angry. You should, of course, uh, be entitled to have the choice to choose a gas or diesel car. Uh, I think so, at least, that you should be able to choose whatever you want. But if you live in Oslo with a gas or diesel car, where are you filling up when this happens to multiple stations? Well, it hasn't happened to multiple stations, and you have gas, uh, gas and uh, diesel pumps in Oslo still, which is great. The choice that ST1 or Shell made, I think it's Shell, but they are called ST1 now. I don't know why, it's the worst name ever in my opinion. What do you think about the name? ST1 has chosen to do this themselves. There is no incentives for installing charging DC fast charging anymore in Norway. Maybe truck charging, but this is not truck charging there is no incentives. Uh, this means that ST1 paid out of their pocket to demolish gas and diesel pump, uh, pumps and install these. Of course, that's because of the market. We have more uh, electric cars on the road than any other country in the world, uh, I think, right now, uh, in terms of percentage, not in terms of total numbers, because Norway is just a tiny country, but uh, in terms of percentage. And that's why they chose it. And then people can say, okay, it's because of the subsidies that people have EVs. And that's true. That's the main driver of the major electrification of Norway. Uh, so, but at least it's their decision to install these DC fast chargers in Oslo. So they decided to do it. They think there is a market for it. And they made a the decision to do this uh, and demolish the gas or and uh, diesel pumps. So now we only have DC fast charging at this station. What do you think about this? Do you think it's a good movement? Do you think it's annoying, uh, too annoying for gas or diesel car owners? Would you charge there? Would you choose uh, this ST1 station for charging? Actually, let's uh, check the pricing uh, of the chargers because uh, pricing, oh wow, it's warm outside. It's like uh, super humid, I don't know. It reserves 450. 5.79 kroners per kilowatt hour, so quite expensive, but not the end of the world. I think it's worth it if you are just coming through to charge. I think it's a okay price. Would you choose this charging station, this ST1 charging station right by the road here? It's uh, very central, but at the same time, not very far from the ring roads around Norway. So it's uh, an amazing placement in my opinion. Oslo is completely empty now due to the summer vacation, but we still have people coming and charging. Three, four taxis charging just a few minutes ago. Uh, so people are using this like crazy. Uh, I think there might be even a charging queue here at uh, rush hour. And here you have the vacuum you have everything you need. Maybe you can charge your EV here for free. Anyways, that was it for this showcase of uh, the demolished gas station that turned into an EV charging station. Let me know down below if you like videos like these. Thank you so much for watching this Autospec Bits video and uh, you will likely see me uh, again very soon.